Uh, Mr. Kedogan, we're talking today about Africa reshaping uh, its governance system or its governance, but then before looking at that, let's understand uh, uh, what governance is all about, bringing it uh, uh, or relating it with the, the African context. That is very good, uh, and, and I'm happy to, to take the first bite of this debate because uh, when we look at governance, it is a basket of things. Uh, it's about saying, from a government point of view, how much of what we put in as public office bearers uh, to serve the public that we represent, as opposed to serving uh, uh, foreign interests, so to speak. Because at the end of the day, it's the people that elect government. And government is supposed to actually, through the public office bearers, to serve the interests of the people. And uh, there are a few kind of categories of uh, uh, this thing that uh, we refer to as governance. And one of them is to serve uh, under the burner of environmental uh, challenges. And secondly, it's about social challenges and, and how we lead. Uh, in the context of geopolitics. So you find that some governments still have uh, some linkages to former uh, uh, colony, uh, colonial masters, where they're still paying uh, some kind of uh, tax or revenue or whatever it is that they pay, uh, thereby diverting uh, whatever comes out of the resources that they uh, have in the country towards their former colonial masters. And one of the biggest, biggest challenges, even bigger than that, is the fact that the colonial value chains have never been broken. So there is uh, a lot of uh, uh, getting resources from the ground on the continent and exporting these resources without actually uh, beneficiating them. So that in the end, the return on investment for the resources they have is a kind of a pittance and not only are we uh, exporting these resources in their raw form, we are also exporting jobs that would otherwise have been on the continent had we had a longer value chain of value adding so that in the end, the young Africans who are now even at the, at, at the level of uh, more than 50% uh, in the age group of 18 to 35 uh, being unemployed. So that is... Uh, the kind of a basket of challenges that I believe uh, fall under this uh, thing called governance from a government point of view. Uh, Mr. Kadogan, uh, we want us to draw a while talking earlier on. You made mention about uh, uh, the, the, the present uh, geopolitics around uh, the world or across Africa that is actually uh, giving another perspective or affecting the governance system. Let's try to understand the relationship between governance and geopolitics, especially uh, in the contemporary society, and then see how Africa, like we asked in the previous how can Africa position itself better at the international level to make good use of the changes that are occurring uh, to actually position itself and to ensure uh, that their stakeholders drive the development that African countries or African economies need? It's, it's, a, it's a great question to ask. And to ask uh, in debate because there is a direct link between governance and geopolitics. And it links to what uh, my fellow panelists here, Francis, raised uh, as to whether uh, leadership or any form of governance actually delivers development. There's a very nice book in the development sector that was written by Amartya Sen. And uh, the title of the book is uh, Development as Freedom. So if we, we actually look at development to such an extent that uh, it doesn't uh, deliver freedom to the followers of the governments that we are putting in place, then it means then that form of governance is uh, not helpful to the people. There has to be a kind of a looking towards the people, as opposed to looking away from the people to serve the colonial masters, to serve the interests 
of the major geopolit geopolitical powers at the expense of the people. So if the government of the day in any of the countries on the continent focuses on uh, serving the interests of the people that it represents, then we can say democracy works. But if democracy and development are not a return in investment for putting a particular government in place, then it means they are not served. There has to be a direct and an intentional and a plan looking at the needs of the citizens of any particular country. And if we raise the bar a little bit and we look at Africa as a whole from Cape to Cairo, it, needs, it means then that through the African Union, through the new Africa uh, partnership for uh, uh, Africa's development, and also the intra-Africa trade uh, platform that has been created now, if these bodies do not deliver development and do not deliver a better economic outcome for the continent as a whole, it means then there is no proper collaboration from to Cairo. So it's not just at a national level, it goes to the regional level and it goes to the continental level. That kind of a look with the look inside as opposed to looking outside to serve the interests uh, of the colonial masters. And lastly, what I would like to say is that if you look at the World Competitiveness Report, there is a very direct link between the, 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 the intimacy that exists between government of the day, of the, of the top 20 uh, countries that form part of the World Competitiveness Report from a uh, economic development point of view, and the intimacy between those governments and business leadership. To such an extent that business and government work together to serve the economic interests of those countries. Whilst in, in, in Africa, it's different. The business leaders of most of these uh, the, these African countries, they serve the mother's chief, they serve the head office of the multinational, as opposed to serving the interest of the citizens in collaboration with the government in which they exist. That's the last point. Afrique Média. Le monde, c'est nous.